yes, we can see Donald Trump didn't do what he could have done while president, acknowledging that he had opposition and very little support, but he didn't do what he could have done for us, made it evident many times that he doesn't care about the white race, at least by way of his actions. We don't know if he's got a secret in his heart somewhere. It doesn't matter if he does. What matters is what's he's, what he's producing. Patriot Day abandoned the people who came out there who are being persecuted by the federal government 100%. We don't, we detest every single one of those acts at the same time. Trump is the only president, or he's the only politician, the only individual who could be president that makes white people, whether he wants to do this or not, just part of his, part of his bit that he uses to get elected, that makes white people increasingly love and openly love ourselves. Nothing like the MAGA movement during Trump's first run for office has existed in our lifetimes. White people engendered and encouraged to become concerned about themselves by way of this dog whistle of making America great again. They thought about what they care about. So both implicitly and explicitly, white sympathy was stirred across the United States. He is the only one that can do that or will do that. That's why we need Donald Trump to run for office, to win the nomination. And if he wins the presidency, if it goes all the way to there, whatever, we can make hay. We can do good for our people and therefore good for the whole country, for all people of all immutable characteristics. Because by putting an end to our victimization, we put an end to the destruction of America. We can do that within the energy and the enthusiasm and this uh, awakening awareness of one's dignity in the body of the white race, the founding stock of the United States. We can do that with him running for office. We, we can't do it with anybody else. Nobody, everybody else, we, can, we could use in DeSantis, we could, we could use him in different ways, but not nearly as strong. Biden wins again. We can get to people, but not nearly as, as well as we can with the energy that is engendered by Donald Trump. So we don't have to like Trump. We can hope the entire, we can hope he could actually, that'd be great. That'd be great if he decides to do something. You know what's, what for me, it's not him getting into office and then actually doing something big in office for us, that is the most important thing. Because as you can see, everything that happens, everything that happens in office by any, pol even a billionaire president is easily just stymied and rolled back, isn't it? So it's not what happens in office that's relevant to us. What's relevant to us is that on the campaign trail, Trump will say X one day, and all those thousands of white people that are present and all the millions at home will cheer and say, yes, damn right. That's what matters for us. And then the next rally, it'll be why he'll say, and the same thing will happen. DeSantis and the others are gonna be talking about at best populism, multiracial populism. That is not going to stir anything in the hearts of our brothers and sisters. Vis-a-vis a, -vis a concern for an end of the vic our victimization. So that's why it's extremely important that Trump get the nomination and run for president. And Ye and Fuentes undermining that, potentially undermining that, and they, they have done damage already, is infuriating because Ye is absolutely not going to engender this concern for ourselves, for white people. Ye is not going to engender in the white population a dignity, a newfound dignity that yes, what we care about should matter. What the way America used to be should matter. It should be able to be like that. That's not gonna happen by way of yay. And that's not gonna happen by way of DeSantis, not even remotely. In fact, yay, all this thing that yay is going to do is it's going to prove, and, and Fuentes and Milo, it's going to, increasingly in the real world, 
concretize, instantiate the anti-white narrative. You know what's going to happen with these powerful anti-white groups after after this little this circus show, because that's really what they should do. They should have thrown a, a circus tent over what was happening there and what continues to happen with those three. Throw the big top over those three. That's where they belong. What is going to happen is that after it's all over and Ye is totally ruined and somehow Milo escapes in some golden parachute unscathed and Fuentes slinks back to the parents' basement and then suddenly does another 180 and oh, now we got to do X, Y, or Z. These big groups are going to move to censor all of us. They're going to move to shut all of us down. They're going to use the opportunity to push back against any resistance to anti-whiteism. That's all that's going to accomplish because these three are going to be out there all day long talking about how this one group of mankind is responsible for all or nearly all or are the sole origin of all that is awful and miserable in the world. And everybody knows that if that were accepted by everybody in the world, what would happen? It would not be a happy consequence. So quite naturally, they're going to push back. So we will be the victims of what these three are doing. I don't laugh at all uh, by, uh, by their antics. I don't think it's, it's uh, funny in the least bit. I think probably what should have happened at Mar-Lago was a Secret Service agent should have grabbed that guy in the 10-year-old's body, maybe by the ankle, and just dragged him away. No, you're not getting anywhere close to the president. But what happened was President Trump trusted Kanye West. Can you believe that? What a foolish thing to do, to trust Kanye West. Trump is just thinking the whole time, obviously, he's going to be thinking that, well, here's this troubled guy, this troubled Kanye West. I'm going to go ahead and have a conversation with him and try to put him on the right course. And then Trump will look good for his buddies by doing that. He'll potentially look good in the media and to people at home by doing that. So his mind was obviously focused on that and was less interested in what looked like were just helpers of Kanye. I'm sure that's what it looked like to Trump. You know, you got this, you got this little guy roll up and he's got, he's got a blue sweatshirt on. Kanye's wearing blue. I'm sure you'd think, oh, this is, you got a cute little helper here. You got a cute little helper. I'm sure that's what Trump was thinking. Not thinking that this is some guy who for the past six, seven years or whatever has had a show in his parents' basement where he has built himself a reputation as being one of the most disgusting people in this country. And anybody that would push back on that has no idea of what Frentes actually is because the disgusting that I'm talking about at least in half is how he has nothing but contempt for all of you. He's in this for himself, not for the principles. And that means that he has no desire to like pull that sword from the stone and to make that happen. He has no desire to do that for all of us. Any place that's going to cause him any pushback, he's going to veer off. And that's what he's doing now. He's abandoning his uh, his followers so that he can he can do this.